Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso, and we are back with another installment of the culinary hotline bling. If only you knew how I gathered the troops together during the ad break to make sure that they ting, 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 because we are joined by one of our experts, chefs making a lot of noise, private chef Neil Anthony. He is here and he has got all of those, all the knowledge. So if you have any questions when it comes to anything culinary related, please give us a call right now on 021-110-5552. I've got the phone on standby and chef Neil Anthony, I'm very excited because I'm seeing cheese, I'm in seeing mix, pasta. Baby, in the mix. And I'm hoping you're making a mac and cheese. You know it. But it's not just a normal mac well, and cheese. Well, it's, it's just a sort of slightly spiked version of mac and cheese. We broke a spoon already, unfortunately, Ooh, but that, that's, okay. that's fine. Hmm. fine. That's, that's, that's what they're for. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, like we said, it's, it's, it's really a, you know, the thing, you know, comfort food and sort of winter warmers and all that sort of stuff, you know, you know, you can just picture that sort of mac and cheese sort of bubbling away in the oven. And that's a sort of, you know, that's what we're really sort of trying to achieve. But what we're going to be able to do is just sort of spike it with some really sort of nice sort of zesty, funky flavors. Okay. Um, most importantly is the, is the sort of base of the cheese, or is the base of the macaroni cheese. You want a hot pan. Uh, so that goes straight in. Some butter, some flour, make ourselves a little roux. A little roux? Yeah, a little roux. Doesn't matter if your butter goes a little bit brown, a little bit uh, noisette. It's absolutely fine. You can just sort of stir that butter through. You want to cook the flour a little bit. You want to cook the flour for like sort of 30, 40 seconds. And that will so also it takes ensure the that taste away, yeah. I was about to say, I've, I've tasted some roux where there's some been roux. a bit of no a No one likes a flowery taste. roux. No. Also, season in the beginning as well. Season in the beginning with salt and pepper, so you get that, that flavour going all the way through. If you only season at the end, then you really just get that sort of sodium, sort of saltiness. So uh, that's a nice sort of mixture vibe there. In with your milk. Now, you can heat this milk up. You can infuse it with all sorts of stuff. We don't uh, need to go down that road today. Just... Uh, Sort of beat it through so you don't get any lumps. No, we don't want lumpy. We don't want lumpy sauce. No one likes the lumpy sauce. Get rid of that. Boom. So just whisk that through. As it heats up, it'll sort of start to thicken. Some English mustard, or any mustard of your choice that you like. That gives it a real nice sort of background heat. You know I mean, we're not adding anything like sort of, you know, not anything like sort of chilies or anything like that. Although you can if you really wanted to. Just but, add a little, uh, little a nice spice. little mustard, little background heat on that. So that goes through there. So you want? I need to come closer and just see. Yeah, so I mean, it's beautifully velvety smooth. smooth there now. Absolutely smooth. Yeah. Listen, if you have a, a, a tip or a trick or a way you like to do your mac and cheese, you're welcome to give us a call. The phone's right here. That number is 021 Chef Neil Anthony is showing us his version right now. Ooh. You want the cheese sauce to be quite thick because when you sort of add the macaroni and bake it, it's, it can tend to sort of thin it down a bit. Okay. And that's the last thing you want is a sort of a. A thin mac and cheese. You want it to be quite nice and sort of... And saucy. Thick and saucy, exactly. There we go. And so then, you've added some cheese bang. sauce and now you're adding yeah. two different so kinds two of... Yeah, so two different kinds of cheeses, a cheddar and a Swiss. Swiss gives us that nice little sort of, you know, stringiness. The cheddar gives us that real sort of sharp saltiness. I feel like this recipe needs well. to come with a, a, a warning, like upside Well, if you're lactose hand. intolerant, you can turn your TV <laughs> off now as well. So yeah, it's, it's quite sort of, it's quite heavy, but you know, that's the thing. It's, it's winter. So uh, to indulge a little. You can indulge a bit. Okay. And also, In front you know, of me, I've got some yummy ingredients. I believe this is for the topping. Yes, yes. So there's another thing that we do to make this sort of mac and cheese a little bit more vibrant, a little bit funkier. You got some you got some panko breadcrumbs there. You got some bacon. Got some lemon zest and a bit more cheese. Pop those all together. Give them a mix. Okay. I'll get onto the that. The lemon also sort of really cuts through that sort of rich fattiness of the whole dish. And the cheese just causes, gives us a nice little crust. The panko gives us a nice little crust. And we want that extra crust crunch exactly, yeah. to it. I love that you're adding a little bit of lemon zest to this. So that sort of I mean, look at that sort of what you're looking at on the sauce. Ooh, look at that sauce. So you want that sort of real sort of oh. nice stringiness like that. Stringy, stringy, yeah. stringy. Well, listen, Proper if you want stick to your ribs situation. If you want to give us a call, our lines are open. That number is 021 110 <laughs> So you then need to have your cooked macaroni. So you Look do at that. that. Proper, proper Pull that through. Yeah, no, it needs to be properly saucy. Well, this is not TV cooking. Normally when we do a recipe, like half the steps are done for you. You've literally made this from scratch. Well, you know, the pasta's boiled. <laughs> <laughs> well, the pasta. Yeah. We've got our dish. Take your favorite baking dish. Pop that into the I feel like our dish might be top. a bit too small. That's OK. It doesn't matter. You can just fill it to the brim. Fill it to the brim like that. Boom. Chuck it on top. Chuck it on top. Yeah. 
Look just boom, bang. You can get some parsley through there, some rosemary, some thyme, some garlic if you want. Give it a bit more sort of, a bit more oomph. And then that goes into the oven. That goes into your oven. Bake it at about 180 for about, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. Oh, and you just added a dollop of cheese sauce at the there top. You, go. you are so aggressive in the kitchen. This is amazing. <laughs> Listen, we're breaking spoons. We are we throwing go. things in the basin. Rules, if baby. you want to be part of our culinary hotline bling, Chef Neil Anthony is here. We also have a very special guest joining us soon. So give us a call. That number is 21 And if you want to get your hands on this delicious recipe, we have it available on our website, expressoshow.com. It's my feel-good it is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. It is the culinary hotline bling. <laughs> oh. Chef Neil Anthony is here making a lot of noise. And today is also super duper special because we get to invite one of our viewers into the kitchen. Let's give a warm and big welcome to Vanessa Bird from Brooklyn. Vanessa, come and join us here. Come on, Vanessa. <laughs> Yes, in the yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Of course, when you enter the, the espresso kitchen, we have to give you an espresso I was going to wear those exact apron. same boots this morning, and then you I was were. like, okay, now. There we go. This is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's so nice that you are joining us today in the kitchen. Talk to me, what is it that you're going to make? Because Chef Neil Anthony showed us one of his comfort dishes, which is a mac and cheese. And I'm seeing lots of warm, Ooh. homey ingredients in front of me. What are you going to cook for us today? It's basically a sausage stew. A sausage food. What do we call sausage food? Sausage, sausage food. food. Is yeah. this a favorite in the Love family? It. Yes, it is. Um, it's a favorite and it's also easy, convenient, because I work afternoons. Okay. Um, so I'm home in the morning. So it's quick, quick, quick before I go to work. Okay, yeah. so this is the type of dish. It's all about you're the cooking. prep, baby. It's all about the prep. It's all about the prep. Yeah, through that. So when you about. make this dish in the morning, mm -hmm. you go off to work, what? and when you come back, you just heat it up and dinner is served. Everyone's home by the time I get home, so they just cook the rice for me and then. Heat it up and pops your uncle. Know. Amazing. So you easier. can kick us off here. I mean, Chef Neil okay. Anthony, when it comes to making <laughs> stews, yeah. I love saying your full name. <laughs> when it comes to making stews, is that Wait. something you get to cook quite often? Yeah, big time, yeah. I mean, so it's it's a nice thing to get again, you know, the sort of, if you, I mean, I don't spend that much time at home. Uh, but, I mean, when I, when I do spend time at home, I like to sort of bulk cook. And it always, the thing is, it's nice to make a stew or something like that and then keep it in the fridge. Mm. It always tastes better the next day. It does. You know, anything like that's always sort of, always, always sort of great. And it's just nice, you know, to have something, you know, have something in your fridge that's ready. And also just, uh, just that sort of real sort of, it's, it's nice, it's easy to eat as well. Yes. You know, you can just really sort of hang around, eat it with a spoon, you can eat it on the go. It's, uh, it's just a nice thing to have. And also it's nice sort of family vibe thing to do if you've got a family around or also if, you've got, if you're holding like a, a dinner party, whatever, it's a beautiful thing because then you can just sort of have it on the go, boom, done. Okay. So, Vanessa, you have got your onions, onions. in. You've I've added. I've added my garlic. Nice. Just to sweat that out a little bit. Chili, chili. optional. Ooh. Yeah. Depending how strong you like it. Does like your family like ch uh, chili? We have <laughs> three grandchildren, so they not they don't do okay. strong. Okay. So not the hot we yet. just, yeah, just... Um, a little bit for a, a little bit goes a, little a long bit, way. A yeah. little bit goes a long way. Yeah. Now, Vanessa, I have to ask you this. So my mom, I grew up in a household where yeah. she makes the most incredible stews, and whenever I ask her for the recipe, she always like, oh, I cook out of my head. I don't know how much I use. Yeah. Yes. Are you one of those? <laughs> yes. So um, you don't share your recipes? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've yeah, it's easy. You look, there's onions, and you just put it in. You yeah, know what they, I mean? They, there you they, go. Pretty I good don't even know how many onions. No, you don't. How many grams of onion? How many grams of this? Mm. No, just you go cook, for it, man. You cook according to your feel. And yeah. I don't do grams. I do cups or, or sprinkles. Sprinkles. Yeah. sprinkles. Or you go sprinkles, according that's to a good taste. one, yeah. Yes. A sprinkle, yeah. yeah. Okay. So onions should be like really, really brown for cool. a stew. You like it yeah. to go color. really, really brown. Nice. Um, but I don't think they have enough time to that's brown, okay. brown, 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 that's brown. Fine. Imagine so, they're brown. It's TV. Imagine it's they're brown. <laughs> um, you could add a little bit of water if you want yeah. but um, not really. Cool. So in goes your sausage. What sort of sausage do you do? Is I your, use, your you could sausage use, of choice. Cho yeah, <laughs> just not bourrevoise. Not bourrevoise, okay, cool. Anything but a bourrevoise. We can yeah. go with that, we're down Beef with that. Beef sausage, lasagna nice. sausage, yeah. cilantro. Ooh, cool. Yeah, so that browns, yeah, browns, funky. browns because the um, sausage cooks Fairly quickly. Okay. Yeah. I like to add my. Um, I'll give it a bit of a little a, bit of a sprinkle. Spice, a little sprinkle bit, of little salt little and pepper is in the recipe. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Nice. Sausage will be quite highly flavoured as well, yes. so you don't need to add yes. sort of too yes. much any other of the other sausage is going to sort of yeah. give us that. So with the punch. sausage is in, 
Um, you could do your potatoes as well, then it's okay, cool. mixed together. Yeah, nice, nice, uh, nice. Oops, and that one's okay. often quite Boom. nice. Could yeah. um, cut it a little bit smaller. Yeah, yeah. We Obviously. like that rustic big look, you know? Everything looks bigger and bigger. It also cook, yeah. cooks for quite a while. It'll sort of cook down and break up a bit, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. So that's what you look Then I'd like, I like to um, use good old stock. Yeah, in a, beef stock. Uh, I'll just put it in, in yeah. there. Pop it in there. A little Add bit of water. water. Nice. Yeah. So then that would then break down and yeah. mix into the water and... Also giving it a nice sort of a... Nice sort of depth of flavour as well. Yes. I mean, you could use chicken stock as well, you could use beef stock, yeah. anything like that, yeah? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, Boom. listen, Bang. it's going to be delicious. Big, big flavour in there. As you can see, Vanessa is showing us her delicious sausage briody, <laughs> a vorsi briody. What is the name of this dish? Oh, sausage Vanessa's food. Vanessa's sausage stew. Sausage food. Sausage. Listen, this is yeah. sausage stew. If you so. have any comments or questions, if you would love to pick Neil Anthony's brain, please give us a call. This is the culinary hotline where we solve all of your culinary conundrums. Call us now on 021-110-5552. There we go. Listen, this, this looks is incredible. You can cover. Okay. Yeah. And let it all just marry. You can also even do this in like a slow cooker and just sort of leave it on all day, no? One exactly. of those sort of vibes. Exactly. Um, Amazing. And then when do we add the baked beans and the butternut? Butternut cooks down fairly quickly. Okay. So that's kind of the last thing yeah. that goes in. Baked beans, optional. I'm not optional. a fan, Woo. but the family's big, so yeah. we'll add the butternut. And Amazing. Yeah. Vanessa, it was yeah. so great having you here. Thank you for sharing a family <laughs> recipe. If you want to get your hands on Vanessa's sausage briody, it is available on our website, expressoshow.com. Neil Anthony's not going anywhere. We still have one more culinary hotline bling coming your way. It's my feel-good breakfast show. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show, Espresso on S3. And this morning, we are going through some of our favorite winter comfort foods. And we are also having private chef Neil Anthony, as well as one of our special viewers, Vanessa Bird, in studio with us. And we are here to answer your questions. So if you have any questions around comfort food, give us a call on 021-551. Uh, in fact, I just gave you a different number there. It's 021-110-2552. That's my number, by the way. You know, <laughs> there we go. Give That's my number, number. out, sorry. <laughs> I nearly gave you a different number. <laughs> Call the one I said. And then, of course, Neil Anthony, you here to make yeah, another one. And we're about to make a mutton curry. Yeah. Oh, the phone's I'll ringing. Mutton curry. I'll pick of it up. Course. Okay, let's answer this one. <laughs> Hello? Hi, is this Robin from Durban? No. What is your comment or question? I have a question for you. Yes. I would like to know, can I make this delicious meal on an air fryer? And what would the best way to do it? Can you make a what, sorry, an air fryer? Can you just say that again? Repeat that for us. I'd like to make this dish in an air fryer. A dish in an air fryer. Can you tell me if it would work? And Which what would the best way to do it? Okay, Please. the sausage dish. She wants to know the if we can make dish that. Sausage dish in an air fryer. Um, I would say no, unfortunately. Okay. It's not really a sort of air fry style dish. Um, okay. I would say if you did do it, I, maybe if you wanted to do it something similar to that mac and cheese, you could probably make the sausage casserole in its casserole dish, put in maybe a little sort of topping vibe on it, and then air fry it to get a bit of crisp on top. But otherwise, it needs a sort of really, it's like more of a low and slow style situation. So you would need more of an instant pot or yeah, a Yeah, an instant pot cooker. or any, yeah, and that's something like that, like a slow cooker or, okay. or just sort of on the stove stuff. So Amazing. Robin, thank you for You can't air fry question. everything. Listen, <laughs> some of us like to, okay? It's quick and easy. Now, Neil, you're about to show us a mutton curry. Earlier, and Vanessa yeah. showed us one of her favorite dishes. Jeez. So you're going to kick it off Yeah, we're going to roll through with this. So there's a couple of components. We're going to make like a, I don't I mean, how does this thing work? I can do that you. Can do that for me. I'll do that for so you. So you pop all of that in there for me. So okay. that's like Vanessa, a, that's a nice little sort of spice me. blend vibe. Let's see how that goes down. We've got some fennel seeds, some cardamom, some clove, you can add that some cinnamon. So get all that into that funky blender. You can't air fry this either, guys, so that's no, surprising. So but we, we can really about go with that. to blend so, yeah, everything. About to blend everything into a nice little sort of spice Thank there. You. I've got some chili powder, some garlic powder, and some fennel powder here. Then we're just going to sort of what's called blooming or just sort of making a nice little sort of paste out sure. of that. I'm going to make a bit of noise. Go for it. <laughs> nice. Vanessa, you mix that up for me, darling. A bit more, a bit more, a bit, bit more. more yeah, me. a bit more. Look at that. Yeah. Now, this works in a blender like that, it works in the spice grinder as well. Okay, I... I... Bang. Well, you can pop that into this spice mix as well. So we're making a nice sort of spice paste. 
So that, that actually worked quite well. It did. Wow. Look I'm at impressed. that. I'm going I'm to impressed. Cast this. I'm so impressed. So bang that onto there. Oh, and you oh, get the nice. smell of cinnamon. Bang, straight away, yeah. Oh. When you get it, so it's, I mean, you know, it's that real sort of, it's like a Moroccan kick. It's like a sort of, mm. I don't know, sort of like a Cape Town kick. I can't, I don't know. You tell me. Cape Malay kick. Cape Malay kick. I don't want to get confused with that sort of stuff. <laughs> so that's a nice, then again, that's a nice sort of uh, curry sort of paste situation. So we've got a nice big pan here, a nice sort of hot pan there. Uh, we're going to fry up, we're going to fry a couple of spices there. We've got some black cardamom. We've got a little bay leaf there. Now you could use a sort of curry leaf or anything like that if you wanted. Of course, nice hot pan. We've got some garlic ginger going in as well. Okay. See, my mom is uh, living in Durban, so whenever yeah. I go visit, I always have friends say, oh, bring back spices. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Lisa, yeah where do you get your spices from? Just at the grocery store, or do you also have a connection? <laughs> <laughs> up in Boer Okay, okay. They got yeah. the best spices the best. there too. Yes, yes. 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 So, we're going to fry our spices off a little bit. Nice, like that. Bang, bang, bang. So, we've got some mutton here. I'm going to season that up, a little salt and pepper. Into our spice mix, going to go some shallots. And you could obviously use onion there. <coughs> Changing things up, is that spice hitting you? <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's a good cook. <laughs> when the neighbours start coughing, you know, when your neighbours start coughing, you know, it's a good curry. Yeah, so this is the type of curry that when people come to your driveway, yeah. they'll already be able to smell it. Exactly. <coughs> Are you also exactly. now getting it? You can yeah. move closer cool. to me, Vanessa. We'll stand here. <laughs> so I'm trying to tame it down a bit, so that's fine. So, a little bit more oil in there. And of course our mutton. Now this is beautiful, it's obviously got all that sort of fat and sinew situations going on. That goes in there, bang. <laughs> a little bit of colour on that. Uh, now you think it's you... obviously quite spicy, but you know, that's going to be a lot of sauce, there's going to be, you know, it has to sort of permeate that meat. Yeah. Everything's got to sort of, you know, everything's got to sort of marry together, mm. essentially. So there's something, the secret to stews, and I feel like you hitting the nail on the head here, Vanessa, is because you make it the morning, it has that time to rest before you serve it. Yeah. And I feel like when it comes to mutton, Neil, that's something you need to cook quite slowly, right? Yeah, no, it's a low and slow cook for sure. You know, I mean, it's, there's such a nice sort of real depth of flavour in the mutton that you really want to sort of bring that out. So it's a low and slow cook. Um... A little bit of colour on there. You know, you don't need to add any sort of flour or anything to that. Some people sort of coat the meat in flour and stuff. But this is going to cook really nice and low and slow. And as those tendons break down, as the sort of onions break down, it makes that real nice sort of thick sauce. We're going to get a bit fancy and add some saffron as well. Ooh. I know. And just, uh, that's just like a Breaking little bit, because saffron's quite potent. Saffron's quite punchy, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it can be overpowering. So that's why you only really need sort of small bits of it. <clears throat> a little bit of uh, water. And then... Some nice yogurt. Oof. <laughs> Chef Neil Anthony, you know I mean? this looks incredible. Of course, all of the recipes we showed you today, the two that Neil Anthony made, as well as the one Vanessa made, it's all available on our website. So if you want to get your hands on the mutton curry, the sausage briadi, or even that mac and cheese, it is available on our website, expressoshow.com. I feel like you need to give a shout out boom, to your boom. grandkids because they didn't go to school today <laughs> to watch Nana on wow. TV. I wish I had done that. <laughs> Shannon, Zaki, Eden. Nana loves you. Oh, And Kenzie and Jordan. There we go. You can't forget about the kids. No. There we, we go. go. Oh, Neil Anthony. So yeah, cover thank that. You Cook so it for much. about sort of two, three hours. Let it chill. You can reheat it. You can sort of either then, you know, eat it the next day, eat it the same day. Amazing. Black bread, rice, rock and roll. Mm. Oh, well, there we go. That was your culinary hotline. Bling. Ding, ding, ding. 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 There we yeah. go.